Psychedelic Sacred Heart. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. You're very welcome to the Brendan Option coming to you courtesy of Immaculata Productions. I'm Father Brendan Kilcoyne. If you like our work, would you hit the subscribe button? If you want to send us a few quid, use Patreon or PayPal. Keep the constructive comments coming and remember that the comments help the algorithm. And um, above all, remember us in your prayers. Psychedelic Sacred Heart. For years, I knew nothing about the Divine Mercy devotion. Didn't trouble myself to learn about it. But I was struck by these pictures that you would see coming up to novenas or that kind of thing on lampposts and uh, the like by the side of the road. And I remember thinking that that was a, a very... Uh, it was a very uh, kind of lively take on the Sacred Heart. Uh, I grew up in a house which, like every Catholic house at the time, had a picture of the Sacred Heart over the fireplace. And the Sacred Heart picture, traditional Sacred Heart picture itself, is, I suppose, a gaudy enough affair. Benedict Rochelle, I remember, the late Benedict Rochelle, Father Benedict, explaining that, in fact, that depiction of the Sacred Heart is pretty much originates with a devotional uh, reproduction art, a Catholic pious art of, uh, in America in the 19th century. I think he said Kansas. There were some printers in Kansas. But in fact, uh, Margaret Mary Alico didn't quite see that. She, she saw a heart, yes, you know, in, in, encased in or surrounded by, by thorns and all the rest. But it wasn't, wasn't like the Sacred Heart picture, which is a bit of an, an artist's elaboration. Well, the picture of the Divine Mercy was not invented by somebody in Kansas, and I'm sure Kansas is a fantastic place. That's pretty much what Faustina saw. Now, she had problems with the paintings. and we, I'm not going to go into the, diff the, hyla, the different paintings. Okay, I'm not going into them. But ultimately, I don't think any of the paintings she felt did credit to what she saw. You know, I don't think. I think the Vilnius one was maybe a bit closer. Yeah. But they just didn't do credit to what she saw. They're still, they're still lovely things. And they make the point very clearly. And so you have those rays coming, coming forth and you have this tremendous sense of, of the, the bubbling uh, lava of God's love for us. The, the, the welling up of the living water in the heart. Now, famously, of course, when Christ's body was pierced, and this apparently is quite convincing medical explanation, blood and water gushed forth from the wound. Divine Mercy picture shows, again, those, those two colours. Uh, comparisons have also been made, of course, to the Polish flag because her visions were on the eve of the terrifying, uh, in some ways, uh, para-Holocaust, would you say? Uh, of of the Polish nation in that when we think of the Holocaust quite understandably we think of the destruction attempted destruction of the Jewish people to the rate of some six million now quite a few of those were Polish and then you had many Polish Catholics priests teachers the like pretty much anyone who could give trouble killed on both sides you had the the infamous, uh, the Katyn massacre of the Polish officers by the NKVD, the Soviet secret police. Some 20%, one-fifth of the Polish nation, one way or another, were killed in the war. One-fifth of the Polish nation were killed in the war. Now that's, uh, that's a holocaust. That's a Holocaust, yeah. And of course, many of them in the Holocaust that we think of, the destruction of the Jewish people, but also many of them killed in the course of that Holocaust because the Nazis um, were, in a way, like, they were like um, mink. They were ideological killers. 
as were the communists, to whom they were closely related. They were killers. Yeah, pure killers. Stone cold killers. Natural, as it were, ideological natural born killers. And so these visions of Faustina are not some fairy tale, uh, syrupy, um, easily won piety. This is an assurance that is made in the in the in a chiaroscuro, in a play of light and shade that 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 is immensely ominous. This assurance, and yet the assurance is powerful, direct, and definite. And what does the divine mercy devotion tell us? Is that uh, the Father has accepted, as the Church knew this, we are reminded again. It's rehearsed. The Father has accepted the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. It is done. Behold, I make all things new. We are forgiven. If we choose to be forgiven. And the horrors that were to unfold in Eastern Europe and elsewhere were an indication that mankind does not always choose to be forgiven and in fact often doesn't choose to be forgiven. Now, I need hardly point out to you that our Divine Mercy Sunday is occurring in the context of uh, an ongoing Holocaust in the world of children, a beginning and slightly increasing Holocaust of elderly people in some of the most advanced countries in Western Europe, and a belated but very spirited beginning of a Holocaust here in Ireland. Over 20,000 children now dead. And talk of euthanasia, which I can assure you will be more than talk in the end. Killers. We need divine mercy. If you you think divine mercy is just a nice thing, if you feel it's just an emotional thing, it's just one more lovely way, divine mercy is, is a very powerful, very, very austere, very very um, unblinking way of looking at the Catholic faith. This is the mercy of God being poured down upon us, but at a tremendous cost. And always in the context of the presence and activity of the devil and of evil. So what's my message to you for this Divine Mercy Sunday? The first thing is be of good cheer. You are saved. The second thing is Hold on that for a minute, because you're still you, which means you could manage to pull defeat out of the jaws of victory, like most human beings. So you're saved, but don't underestimate your own brilliant and ingenious ability to jump out of the only lifeboat that actually works. That's the second thing. The third thing is that the world is in at least as much chaos as it ever has been. Quite possibly more. The church is in at least as much chaos as it ever has been, with a few very imaginative modern twists on it. Yeah? We need divine mercy. We need mercy. We need the courage that mercy gives us, the sense of ownership that mercy gives us. We need the sense of a new beginning and a future to give us the courage to stand up on our hind legs and fight. We don't have to win. I'm sick and tired of hearing people saying, nobody will listen, you can't turn the clock back, the world, the world won't change, the world won't listen. Do you really think the church is so stupid she didn't know all that? Yeah? You don't have to win. He has already won. But you must participate in the sacrifice, participate to participate in the resurrection. You must step into the whole thing. Divine mercy. Now you get that down you. It'll do you good. Hmm? You need a more psychedelic faith. Believe me, there's going to be a lot of dark out there. The more colour, the better. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.